Hey folks, I'm Nate. I'm a technical marketing manager with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And today I'm going to show you how you deploy a standard RHEL system using the Google Cloud Platform, Google Compute Engine Wizard. Sometimes it's difficult to tell how to deploy RHEL, how to choose the right version of RHEL, or even where you're getting RHEL from or how you're paying for it when you're deploying to a cloud provider. And this video series is meant to help address that. If you would like to see how to define a custom RHEL image using the Red Hat Insights Image Builder and deploy that to Google Compute, then you'll want to look in the description of this video and I'll have a link to another video that shows you exactly how to get that done. Now there's a couple of things you're going to want to decide when you're deploying a new instance to any cloud provider. One of those is how you want to pay for RHEL and the other is where you want to get RHEL from. You can use what's called the pay-as-you-go model where the price for the RHEL subscription and the price for the compute that you're using on the cloud provider are all bundled into one and they're billed through the cloud provider. Red Hat of course still gets uh, paid for the subscription for RHEL but you never have to actually buy a subscription from us and you're billed for it in whatever terms your cloud provider uh, gives you, usually hourly. The other option is to bring your own subscription. If you bring your own subscription, it means that you already have a relationship with Red Hat, or perhaps you started a new relationship with Red Hat, and you have subscriptions directly from us, through your sales rep or through a partner or wherever. And what you're paying your cloud provider for is just the use of their infrastructure, and then you put RHEL in a system and you attach your own subscription to it. These are two models that work well for their own reasons. It's all going to depend on how you choose to pay for RHEL. The other thing to consider is where you're getting RHEL from. If you deploy on your cloud provider using a quick start or custom or standard image, then you're probably going to get it directly from the cloud provider. There's also the concept of a marketplace on any cloud provider, Google included, where you can choose to deploy RHEL from a partner. And that should be listed pretty clearly within the marketplace. When you deploy from a partner, it means that you're buying RHEL from the partner. The partner is probably adding some value. Maybe it's a different sort of deployment. Maybe it includes a different package set. Maybe it's already security hardened. And then when you deploy, um, you're getting the benefits of whatever value they've added. I'm going to show you how to deploy official images, either from Red Hat or from the cloud provider in this series. OK, let's jump into Google Compute Platform. We're going to use Google's Cloud Engine to run uh, a VM instance on their platform. All right, here we are at the Google Cloud Platform uh, welcome page, basically the, the console. Um, from here, you can you know, go into the various uh, sub-services of Google Cloud. We're going to go into where you run virtual machines, which is underneath the Google Compute Engine under VM Instances. Okay, now obviously I'm already logged in here, so you just log in with your normal Google credentials and you should be good to go. Now, uh, we're going to create a new VM by clicking the Create Instance button up here at the top. And this brings us into a pretty straightforward wizard. We're going to give our VM a name. Just call it rel so I can easily identify it later. We're going to pick where we want our instance to run. In this case, it's chosen Las Vegas for us and the zone that it's going to run in. This is basically comes down to where the data center exists and which data center it's in. We're going to choose a machine configuration. Now these are all basically uh, based on what sort of workload you intend to run on your instance. In my case, I'm just going to stick with E2 because it's the default and this is just an example anyway. But you're going to want to look into the various different types and pick the one that works best for the workload that you're trying to deploy. Then we can pick the size that we want, right? So this is a 2V CPU, 4 gig of memory deployment. Uh, this is not going to be the cheapest option out there, but I'm only going to run the thing for a short amount of time. It doesn't really matter to me. Similar to the machine configuration, you're going to want to decide on the machine type, um, you know, how, what, what sort of resources best fit what you're trying to deploy. All right, there's a number of options here based on things like confidential computing, display service. Uh, we're not going to go into details on all of these. What does matter is boot disk. All right, so you can see here it's got our name, says rel, tells us what type of disk it's going to create, how big it's going to be, and then we have to choose the image type. 
Okay, so the image here is Debian Linux. We're going to change it from Debian over to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So we're going to click the Change button here. Now, in this list here, you can see Operating System. We can select the core OS that we want to change, the core operating system. Got choices between CentOS and Debian and Fedora and even Ubuntu's in this list. We're going to find Red Hat Enterprise Linux. You'll notice there's also a listing for Red Hat Enterprise Linux for SAP. That comes at a different price point and it adds some longer lifespan for releases so that you can support your SAP platforms. But we're just going to stick with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Okay, now from the Red Hat Enterprise, or after we've selected Red Hat Enterprise Linux, we need to pick what type or what version of RHEL we want to deploy. Uh, in this case, we're going to pick RHEL 9. Now you can see there's options here for both RHEL 9 for x86-64 and RHEL 9 for ARM64. We're going to pick x86-64. Then you need to choose how you want to pay for RHEL. Uh, you can pay for RHEL... By default, it's going to use pay as you go. You can see that bring your own subscription is not even highlighted for me. That's because I haven't connected my Google account with Red Hat's cloud access program. Now the differences here is with pay as you go, it's exactly what it sounds like. You stand up an instance, as long as the instance is running, you pay for RHEL. You don't pay Red Hat directly though. You pay for RHEL through the cloud provider. So in this case, you're paying Google. Google is our partner, they pay us. Right? So you don't ever actually have to buy a subscription from Red Hat. The other option here is bring your own subscription. Now, basically what that means is you pay Google just for the time and resources that you're using on their uh, infrastructure, and you pay Red Hat for a subscription. This means that after the thing is built and stood up, you'll then want to connect it to a Red Hat subscription. So now that you've chosen RHEL as your platform of choice on your cloud provider, you may not realize that RHEL comes with a lot of extra services that you're entitled to simply by having a RHEL subscription. That includes if you have a pay-as-you-go subscription. Just because you're paying for RHEL through your cloud provider doesn't mean you get any less value out of RHEL. After all, RHEL is more than just a Linux kernel with support behind it. You also get access to Red Hat Insights. There's also a number of other tools that you're going to want to understand and know how to use in order to fully get the most value out of your RHEL subscription. In the description of this video, I'm going to put a link to a blog that, coincidentally, I wrote about all of the extra value that you can get even as a tenant in the cloud on top of RHEL. You should head on over to red.ht slash rel dash cloudstart for more information. In here, you can choose what size you want the disk to be. It's defaulted to 20, which is a decent starting point for a RHEL deployment. There's advanced configurations here that we're not going to delve into. We're going to hit select. What did, oh, I forgot to select pay as you go. So click play as you go and then click select. Okay, now there's also the concept of a marketplace within most of the, the cloud providers. And Google is no exception here. Although it doesn't give me the option, it seems, to use the marketplace right from the wizard here. The difference with a marketplace deployment for a, uh, for a system on any cloud provider is that there could be partners in there that are also providing the same operating system, right? So there could be a Red Hat partner that has some specific build of RHEL. Maybe it's closer to being compliant with a certain you know, policy. Perhaps it offers a different disk layout. Perhaps it offers a different software set. Uh, perhaps it's just that it's offered by that partner instead of directly from Red Hat. Uh, you can deploy any of those from the marketplace, or you can deploy the f the actual approved and um, the actual official RHEL or Red Hat provided images through the marketplace. That's up to you. The only thing you want to be sure of is if you if you check you know who provided the image, know where it's coming from. Make sure it's a vendor that you think you can trust, or maybe a vendor you've already got a relationship. They're still going to get RHEL. It's still going to be the same base operating system. It may just be a slightly different deployment than if you get the official Red Hat images. Okay, so once we've chosen the disk image, um, the next important thing is firewall. We can tell it to allow Apache, sorry, we can tell it to allow HTTP or HTTPS traffic if we want to, if it's going to be a web service uh, that's running here. We can also change some advanced options, but really what I care about at this point is that we're ready to deploy. 
I'm going to click this Create button. And what this is going to do is it's going to actually stand up an instance of Red Hat Enterprise Linux on Google's Cloud Engine. Okay, and you can see it brought us right back to our instances list. And this is actually a relatively quick process. This will come up with a new system pretty quickly. And there it is. It's already stood up and ready to go. Now, one of the nice features on Google's Compute Engine is that we can connect right to the console of our system right here in this little drop down list. So, give me a second here. I'm going to click open in a browser window. Okay, so once we clicked on uh, to access the console of our VM, it comes up with this other window, and in this other window, it literally gets us to the console. So from here, I can actually interact with the system. You can see right there, it's a RHEL 9.2 system. So look at that. Okay, so we've officially deployed a Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9 system on Google's Compute Engine. And as you can see, the process was actually pretty simple. So just be aware that images of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, while they are still RHEL on the marketplace, may be provided by a third party or a partner. All right, and there you have it. We've deployed a Red Hat Enterprise Linux instance on Google's Google Compute Engine. If you'd like to see how to deploy a custom RHEL image to Google's Google Compute Engine, then you should check the description of this video. And in there, you'll find a link to a video where I've used the Red Hat Insights Image Builder to define a custom image and deploy it to Google Compute using the same wizard that we use today. Thanks for watching the video, and I hope it's been informative. I'll catch you in the next one.